Good morning, welcome to the Hour of Code. My name is Dan Schiffman. Uh, I'm broadcasting live from ITP, which is a two-year master's program at Tisch School of the Arts at New York University. Uh, and I'm here to give you, or anybody who's watching, this will get archived so people can watch it later, a one-hour introduction to programming. Uh, the context of that will be something called the Processing Programming Environment. <laughs> I just call it Processing. And uh, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna do it like a couple minutes just to talk about the Processing Foundation and overall goals. Oh, I gotta uh, uh, turn off my, um, I have a preview of my stream going over here and I have some audio. So first of all, uh, if you're hearing me, <laughs> and you can see what's behind me, and if you can kind of see this uh, whiteboard over here, ah, uh, let me know that the audio and the images are good. Um, but uh, rather than waste a lot of time, um, I'm just gonna dive right in. So I've got my eye over here on a chat. Uh, I, see, um, I see that there are some people saying things in the chat which is great, so people are watching, and I'm gonna get started. So I, I think actually the stream a minute ago, uh, it started late, so I'm just gonna reintroduce myself again. Somebody will edit this to start right from this point at some point if this ever gets archived. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna hit the record button, so this will, I'll have a copy of this as well. So I'm gonna pretend now, I'm pretend I'm starting over. Good morning and welcome. My name is Dan Schiffman. I am here broadcasting live from ITP, two years mas two year master's program at Tisch School of the Arts, which is part of New York University. I'm in New York City, live in New York City on Thursday morning. I want to say Saturday night, and like I'm any anywhere near as interested. I don't know. Anyway, that show, whatever. Um, put that aside. Uh, welcome. Okay, what am I here to do? I'm here to do a one hour. It is 10:02 a.m. I'm here to do a one hour introduction to programming for the absolute, complete, and total beginner. Uh, I'm gonna take about five minutes to talk about what this thing called processing is and the processing foundation and, and give you a little bit of a take on the Hour of Code that might be a little different than, I hope, than some things you might be reading or hearing about. And then we're just gonna dive right in. I'm gonna uh, put processing up here. I'm gonna show you how to type some code, make some stuff. I've got a, a whiteboard over here so I can draw uh, some diagrams if we need to. I'll take little breaks. I'll answer questions in the chat. That's my plan. So I'm just gonna peek. Um, uh, yeah, so some people are asking if they can Skype in. I didn't actually figure that out. I'm going to do this again this afternoon. By the way, I'm going to do this again this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. with this other environment called P5JS. Um, so this morning is going to be processing, which is the Java programming language, and this afternoon at 1.30 is going to be P5JS, which is the JavaScript programming language. Okay, so I don't see, I, I'm looking in the chat, I see it going there, and I'm just gonna get started. So it is about 10.03, I wanna give myself just five to 10 minutes to give you a brief introduction. So something that I'm a part of is called the Processing Foundation. It's a non-for-profit organization uh, about, an, uh, oh, <laughs> I had a mission statement somewhere in here, but it's later. But the idea of processing is to make programming, more, uh, you know, in a very simplistic way, just briefly to describe, is to make programming more accessible to a wider audience. And there are three tools that we are currently uh, developing. Uh, one is called Processing, with this P here, which has been in development since 2001. This is what I'm gonna use today in the tutorial. Another tool, which is new, uh, um, which is called P5JS, which is built on top of JavaScript. And there's also processing.py, which is a mode for this processing, which allows you to type Python code. But I can't believe I'm starting this by talking about different programming languages. Here's what I really wanna talk about. Um, so I'm gonna just borrow here from Mitch Resnick and David Siegel. Uh, somebody I'm sure could Google this and, and post a link to this uh, blog, a Medium post in the chat. Um, who posted a recent article called The Different Approach to Coding. Uh, Mitch Resnick and his research group at the MIT Media Lab are the creators of a programming environment called Scratch, which you know, I, I would say is, is, is something for kids to get excited about programming and creation and creativity. Of course, I use it as an adult and I find it to be a wonderful thing, so it's not just for kids. And I think what's important about what the, in this Medium post is thinking about, I wanna talk today, I wanna spend this hour about expressing yourself with code, creativity through code. So the Hour of Code, this is the code.org website, is a wonderful thing. Many new people are discovering programming and thinking about code and may, uh, maybe getting excited about learning something new, uh, uh, putting, uh, getting more people, especially a more diverse 
a set of people of different genders and ethnicities and countries interested in perhaps majoring in computer science as a field of study. And all of that is wonderful. But one thing about most of these tutorials that you'll find on code.org is most of them are puzzles with a correct answer. And if you've ever made a piece of art, you know, art is really about asking questions is one way of thinking about art. So what does it mean to not have a correct answer for your code? What's lost in all of these tutorials which are about solving a puzzle or uh, winning a game type speak? What if you could use programming for creativity? And I'll, I'll give you, I'm going to quote from this Medium post. <laughs> Rather than, I, you know, I wish I had written this myself, but it really spoke to me when I read it. For us, coding is not a set of technical skills, but a new type of literacy and personal expression, valuable for everyone, much like learning to write. Um, this, is, this quote is talking about how this, uh, many of these coding activities, the students are asked to program the movements of a virtual character, navigating through a set of obstacles toward a goal. So this is about that puzzle sol solving. But in some ways, this is like offering a writing class that teaches only grammar and punctuation without providing students a chance to write their own stories. So this is what I want to expose you to today. If you can learn the basics of code, what ideas, what can you express, can you communicate through code? Um, and so I pulled this really briefly this morning from uh, Wikipedia. I, you know, I think it's the other thing that I think is relevant here in this discussion. There's a lot of energy around computer science education, computer science in high schools. Compu uh, there's a, in New York City, we've got CS for all, uh, computer science for everyone. This is a great idea in many ways. I think let's have more people learn to code and more people learn about uh, programming and what it can mean. But this term computer science, a computer scientist specializes in the theory of computation and the design of computational systems. This is really important. We need people to spend their lives deep in studying computer science and build compilers and systems and all computers and all sorts of things like that. But what if you are a dancer, a biologist, a fashion designer, an economist, a journalist, a musician, a painter, a poet, a baseball player, a game designer, a teacher, a chef? What if you don't want to be a computer scientist, but code is important? You know, you might want to have a website. You might want to uh, visualize your own uh, running data as you're training for a marathon. There are so many. It's, just like you are expected to learn to write essays, but you don't necessarily, and, and, you, and you need to write if you're a dancer, biology, fa fashion designer, et cetera, et cetera. What does this mean to apply code to the thing that you're interested in, to the ideas that you want to express? And I think that uh, processing is uh, an environment which is a great place to get started in thinking this way. I'm going to look on the chat, uh, and people are listening to me. Uh, and there's a bunch of people watching, which is really exciting. So I, I'm, I'm having a little, I've done this before with this many uh, people. So I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, but I'm going to keep going. But I want to get to the code stuff first. So the first thing I just want to mention is none of these ideas are, are really that new. Um, this idea of art through code, visual art through code, expressing yourself through code. You know, I learned when I was a kid the, using the logo programming language as a way of issuing commands to a turtle that walks around the screen to draw pictures. Um, there's something, I never actually used this myself, but there's something called HyperCard, which I know a lot of people discovered creativity through computers, through a HyperCard, which is part of the, one of some of the original Mac operating systems. Um, there is something called design by numbers, which is really historically, I think, the, uh, the thing that came right before processing. So design by numbers was a programming environment for, I would loosely say, for visual designers or graphic designers, uh, created by John Maida, uh, who was a professor at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, and was, the, in fact, the professor of Casey Reese and Ben Fry, who are the original creators of processing. And they started this processing project in 2001, studying with John Maida and looking at design by numbers and thinking about taking that even further. So, and then, of course, there's Scratch, which I think is you know, also developed at the MIT Media Lab uh, with uh, Mitch Resnick's uh, Lifelong Kindergarten Group, which is a wonderful environment, in particular for younger kids in the sense that you don't have to... Uh, necessarily type your code, but you get to put these puzzle pieces together um, to implement programming-like concepts. So, okay, so this leads me now, I got to get started here, it's 10-10, we got to do some programming. Um, um, we got to really get into some programming, but this leads me to the processing foundation. So everything that I've been talking about in these last 10 minutes uh, is what the Processing Foundation exists for. And I encourage you to go to processingfoundation.org. I'll put a link in the description of this video when it gets archived. Look at some of our initiatives, look at some of our projects. We've got this new fellowship we're sponsoring. It's particular if you're an educator and you work with uh, a, a, a group of, of, of kids or adults who don't necessarily have easy access to 
code and learning these tools. We're looking to fund projects that bring programming and bring processing to a wider audience. There's pigeons right outside my window. Hi, pigeons. I'm about to close the window. It's just very, very hot in here, and I might have to open it again later. Maybe the audio is now better. Um, so take a look at processing. This is the Processing Foundation's mission. I want to just get started in, 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 in looking at code now. But the one last thing I'll mention is um, I think that if you're, I'm going to move now to the processing website. Uh, which I've got uh, here. Uh, if you're interested, and I, I would love to spend the next 45 minutes just showing you exciting and unique and amazing projects made with processing and other creative uh, tools that involve programming, but I might encourage you just to go to the processing website to look at the exhibition uh, and sort of if you're trying to think of like, well, I get what you're talking about, but I don't like, what are, like, does this really happen? Are people really making things? Um, there's, a, there's a nice set of projects you can take a look at there. So, um, so let me make a note over here for you guys. Uh, this is the URL where you want to go right now if you want to follow along and start typing code with me. So first of all, can everybody read that? Somebody say in the chat if you can read that. I've got, by the way, Periscope going here, which I'm just going to uh, shut off. Um, and I can uh, erase this smiley face. So this is where you want to go right now, processing.org. Uh, and this is the program environment I'm going to use. We've got about 45 minutes to 50 minutes. I mean, I'll stay here all day. <laughs> But I think it's good to sort of contain this into an hour. Obviously, I have, uh, not obviously, but uh, if, you're, if you're interested in more after today, I have lots more video tutorials. And at the end, maybe what I'll try to do is point you towards some resources, some books and other things you might look into if you want to learn more. OK, so uh, coming back over here, what you want to be on now is the processing website. So if you go to just the processing website, you're going to be here. <laughs> There's like. Got some sort of inception thing going on here, but there is a video of me talking about some of the new features of Processing 3. This video won't be so relevant to you if everything here is totally new. This video is really for people who have been already using Processing and want to know what's new in Processing 3. Um, but where you want to go is this link, Download. Download. That's where you want to go next. I'm going to go to Download. Now, one thing you'll notice here is it's asking you for a donation. This is your first day, perhaps, learning to program. All this is new to you. I highly encourage you right now to click no donation. Um, you don't need to take part of this like short hour and, and worry about a credit card or something. But I will mention again that these environments, they take a lot of time and a lot of energy. And mostly, at most, all of the people who are building these things are volunteers, essentially. So we started this non-for-profit foundation to try to fund fellowships and do more and continue the development. So if you're interested in funding us, uh, wonderful. OK, so I'm going to now click Download. And you're going to see here, now it's up to you. Pick your operating system. Are you on Windows? Are you on Linux? Are you on Mac? I am on a Mac right now. So I'm going to show you this tutorial using a Mac. Um, and so if I were to download it, uh, we can see that it is downloading here. And it's got eight seconds left. Now I'm going to be like the, um, a cooking show where I already had the thing in the oven cooking beforehand. So assuming I've downloaded it and extracted it, what I'm actually going to get is an application. And the application is going to look like this. You can see here, this is the processing application. It's got the three there. This is the processing three. The actual version you're using right now, if you downloaded that, was 3.0.1. As things get fixed and things changes, there'll be a, maybe a 0 0.2 and an 0.3. And maybe someday there'll be a processing four. Who knows? Um, that's what's going on. OK. Um, so I see that there are people in the chat saying a few things. You've got it. You're able to watch it on your phone. OK. Um, it is a big file. Uh, it's a large application. It's also uh, on, it, it's, uh, it comes with, it has Java embedded in it uh, because it's using the Java programming language. OK. So now what I'm going to do is launch processing. Now, I just realized. Uh, um, you're going to, I just realized right now that, um, hold on, let me double click it. <laughs> this is like, of course, what happens when you're, um, oh, it's already open. Ah. So I'm gonna, it was already open, that's why nothing was happening. So what, what you're going to get now, you're going to get a slightly different, oh no, I think you might get this welcome message. It depends. You're going to get a different welcome message whether or not you had processing installed previously on your machine, etc. You don't really need to worry about any of this right now. Just click this Get Started button, and you're going to have this window on your computer. Look at this. So this is processing. And guess what? This is all you need to start coding. 
to start learning about programming, to start writing your first program. This is one of the reasons why I just love processing because it's a single thing you can download. It's a place where you can write your code. It's a place where you can run your code. It's a place where you can import extra code libraries. It's all there, all in this one package. Obviously, not obviously, but as you go further down your journey in life of programming, you might discover, oh my God, there's all these different tools I have to learn. I have to piece this together with this thing and connect it with this thing and then I have to download this and install this other thing. So that all of that will come. The nice thing about getting started here is this is all you need. Um, yes, uh, could you wait until the down? So people are asking me to wait until it gets downloaded. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna sort of like, I can to some extent. Yes, I can wait. In fact, I'm gonna, I have, I'm gonna have a little bit of uh, my tea over here. You know, I don't uh, have a sense of what the size of the audience is right now watching. Um, uh, it says 34 people, which is really kind of amazing, actually. And I know some of you are large groups, maybe watching in a classroom, which is really exciting to me. Um, uh, so, but, um, so I'm going to try to pause a little bit. We're on an older version, but that's fine to follow. Yes, if you are using an older version of processing, I don't think you need to upgrade right now. I do highly recommend, though, that after this is over, that you go and update to the newest version. There's just so many nice improvements. But what I'm going to do today is really just using some of the basic core ideas of processing, and none of that has changed really since 2001. Just the interface, the features, a lot of the libraries, a lot of that has really changed. Okay, I hear from, uh, I think, uh, one of our viewers in India, in Mumbai, I think. I can't remember. I was like trying to see where people are from. That they finished downloading. So let's get going. So first of all, here's an exciting moment. You are now going to run your first program. All you need to do is go click this run button. Run. And there you go. You have executed and are running your first program. So what processing always does, now you haven't written any code yet. This is what's kind of amazing. So behind the scenes, a, an, essentially an empty program is executed with no content, no instructions that you've written. But it has opened a window on your computer. So what processing does uh, is it opens a window in your computer and what you are going to learn, what I'm going to show you today is how to write code, how to write instructions to draw into that window. So here is how every single instruction will look. I'm going to say this is the command that you're going to issue, followed by a parenthesis, follow, uh, cl closed with another parenthesis, and ended with a semicolon. So this is the first thing that I want you guys to learn today is that programming is essentially the act of writing instructions for the computer to follow. The difference is I could say, everybody stand up, you know, everybody put your hand on your head, everybody, you know, pat your head and rub your tummy. Am I actually doing that or is that, maybe it's the other way is harder, who knows. So this is me issuing instructions, but I could have said, please stand up or up stand, even though that's weird and incorrect grammar, you probably would have gotten it anyway. With programming, you must, must, must follow the exact syntax. I will show you what happens if you have an error in your syntax. And this is one of the hardest things to get started with, right? When you're first learning is you, a missing semicolon, a missing parentheses, a missing comma, these kind of things can be a problem and nothing will work. So the thing that goes inside of here are, are uh, this is a, not a good pen. I'm gonna, let me try this one, are arguments. They're called arguments. So if this is the command and these are the arguments that are going to be inside the parentheses, arguments are things that modify the command. So if my command to you is walk, I could say the arguments might be walk three steps or walk 10 steps, a three or a 10. That's a thing that modifies the command walk. So for example, and those are always separated by commas. So here's a command that we'll do first. Size, parentheses, some number, followed by a comma, followed by some other number, followed by the end parentheses, followed by a semicolon. Okay? And the question is, what goes in these two spots? Think about that. Try, I'm going to type it with you. Uh, you can try it yourself. Put any numbers you want in there. I'm going to be really conservative <laughs> and I'm just going to say 640 by 360. I've done this before. So uh, I kind of, not, not, that, not that there is, there's no correct answer here, but now if I hit run, something magical has happened. This window is no longer that little tiny window. This window is wider and taller. Now let's think about what those numbers could possibly mean. 640 is describing the width of the window. 
360 is describing the height of the window. What's the unit of measurement, you might be asking yourself. It's, you know, is that 640 inches or centimeters or you know, some sort of strange other measurement that I can't think of? It's not, none of those things. And you, know, you guys have probably all used computers before. You're probably anticipating what I'm going to say. That measurement is pixels. So if you've ever taken a picture with a phone, uh, a camera, or downloaded something, you often see like, oh, this image is 1200 by 720. Or you hear like, oh, this is HD 1080p video. That 1080 is referring to the number of pixels of a width of a particular video. Um, I'm going to just check the chat. Um, do we need to keep an eye on caps also? Yes. Everything is case sensitive. So if you put a capital S for size, it will not work. That's a great question. So what I want to do, and we're kind of like ramping up here at 1020, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the clock, um, is that as we move over here, um, what I want to do now is talk about, okay, so I put 640, 360. So let's think about now what that actually means in the context of that window that's being opened. So here, So if this window, oh, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the wrong place. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. I'm glad I noticed. Wasn't that long. <laughs> this happens to me a lot when I do these because I have a little button here that switches the camera. Um, so uh, just to recap for a second, I'm looking, I'm unpacking here what I meant by 640 by 360 in that window. So if this window is 640 pixels wide and this window is 360 pixels high, there's a really important thing here that I need to show you, to talk to you about, which will, which will then inform all the other functions I'm about to show you, other commands that you can write. So I was using the word command, by the way, to describe this. The actual word, the, the programming term, is this is really a function. A function call is a function that I'm executing, but I think while you're getting started, it's sort of useful to think of it as a command or instruction. So if this is 640 pixels wide and 360 pixels high, here's something really important that you need to know. This pixel over here is the pixel 0, 0. It is the origin pixel. So some of you might be familiar, you know, depending on what you what sort of math kind of classes you've taken or what you've looked at, or you might have used a piece of graph paper. You might be used to a coordinate system like this, which has a 0, 0 in the middle, an x-axis, and a y-axis. This is known as a Cartesian, named for Rene Descartes, mathematician, a Cartesian coordinate system. A computer-based coordinate system, the processing window coordinate system, works in a very similar way, but it's a little bit different. Here, the y-axis, you might count up one, two, three. If zero, zero is here, this is pixel one, this is pixel two, this is pixel three, this is pixel one, this is pixel two. So if you think about it for a second, what is this pixel here in the middle? That pixel here in the middle is pixel 320, halfway from zero to 640, comma 180, halfway from zero to 360. So this idea of thinking of the window as a coordinate system is really key to all of the next commands function calls I'm going to show you. I only showed you size. So here's a list of some things that I'm going to show you next. Rectangle, line, you know, triangle, ellipse. I'm not really writing these all the way out. So you can see the first thing that I'm going to show you is processing as an environment is a, is a programming environment geared towards drawing pictures with code. You can do a lot more with it and think way beyond that, but this is a great way to get started. So if you can figure out some function calls, some commands for drawing pictures, you can design your own picture on the screen using code and, of course, later animate it, move it, make it interactive, all those types of things. So let me come back over here. I'm going to uh, see if anyone has any questions. Um, uh, has, okay, people are asking, has this just started? I'm doing this, my plan is I've got another 35 minutes. So I, you know, my goal is to do this for an hour. Again, uh, those of you who are, I, I, um, some people are asking, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm like lost my train of thought. I do, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of live streams. Yes, I try to do these every week, but I'm doing this particular one to celebrate this hour of code thing. Okay, uh, and I do have lots of videos on my YouTube channel for those of you who are looking for more. Okay, so let's come back here now. Here we go. What are some things we can type? So 
Um, so let's say, let's start, I don't know, somebody in the, no, you guys are like 20 seconds behind me, so I can't, I can't actually live ask you to like shout things out in the chat. But let's start with, um, uh, I'm trying to think, let's start with, let's start with line. I think that's fine. Let's start with line. So I'm going to say line 0, 0, 320, 180. Now you have to think to yourself, what will this make happen? So first of all, line is the command, the function call. The arguments are 0, 0, 320, 180. What do those mean? This is a question that we need to answer. And you can see it comes right after size. So again, programming is the act of writing instructions for the computer to follow. The first one it will follow is size, which we now know sets the size of the window. The second one is line, which you can probably imagine what it does. But let's run this one to see. And you can see there we go. We've got this line. And let's think about that. What did we just say over here? This is 0, 0. This is 320, 180. So that line function, the line function connects an x and a y coordinate to another x and a y coordinate. And here you go, an x and a y coordinate to an x and a y coordinate, the first one being 0, 0, the second one being 3, 20, 180. So I could easily just now add a second one, and I could just pick something, whatever I feel like, 100, comma 50, uh, 600, comma, 3, uh, 300, uh, comma 10. And let's put this one actually over on the other side, and let's run this again. And you can see now I have this other line here that I drew based on these coordinates, 500 comma 50 to 600 comma 10. So you can see that you can write the line instruction as many times as you like with different arguments, with different, uh, with different modifications to draw a line in a different place. Okay, uh, I'm looking, uh, yes, if the width goes from zero to three, 639, the real middle one, yeah, so I'm kind of being loosey-goosey about some of this stuff. Somebody asked, and this is kind of an interesting question, um, you know, if this is pixel zero and I'm saying it's 640 wide, it's actually, there's, the last pixel is actually pixel 639. If you divide by two, eh, is it really, but you know, this is the thing. We don't need to worry about these fine details right now. I think they're less important than the sort of basic idea of getting things up and running and starting to make things. So here's now another question. How would you do this on your own if I wasn't here? It's just like, I mean, as much as I might like to just forever be live streaming, talking about the functions and processing, if you were just by yourself or with some friends and you wanted to, how do you draw a rectangle? How do you draw a triangle? Wanted to look this stuff up. How would you know? Like, it's not so clear what those numbers would do. Just, you can, with some intuition, you could guess and sort of figure it out. So all of this comes down to looking things up in the reference. So this, if you decide you want to keep programming after today, welcome to your life. Reading documentation, reading reference materials, reading tutorials. So you have to rely on the language or environment having a good set of documentation. And I, I like to think that the processing, uh, processing project has excellent documentation. So what I'm looking for here that I want to look at is the reference. So on the processing website, I'm back at processing.org. I'm going to go to reference. And uh, what I'm, you can see there's a lot of different functions that, uh, that you can call in processing. What, what, we're kind of, what I'm kind of focusing on today are 2D primitives. And you can see arc, ellipse, line, point, quad, rect, triangle. So let's look at the line page. And a couple things you can see. Number one is it's showing you first an example. So that's the syntax. This is how it looks. Line is the name of the function. And you can see if you give it these arguments, you get this in your window, and you can see some other, in, uh, some other uh, examples. There's even a way of doing lines in 3D, which is a bit beyond what we're going to do today. And you can see here, look, this is now a sort of generic way of thinking about so there's two ways to call the line function. There's also this z-axis if you're in 3D. We're going to ignore that for right now. So this first way is what matters. Line x1, y1, x2, y2. And if I scroll further down, you can see here, what do those arguments mean? x1 is the x-coordinate of the first point. y1 is the y-coordinate of the first point. x2 is the x-coordinate of the second point. So what this page is doing is it's explaining, this is the syntax. These are the arguments you can put in. This is what those arguments do. So now, if you wanted to say, how do I do a triangle, I could go back and I could click on triangle and I could see, okay, well, here's an example. And you can see, what does a triangle do? It makes a triangle, and sorry, this is kind of small, it makes a triangle out of three points. X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3. Let's add that to our code. So I'm going to go back to my processing sketch 
and I'm going to say triangle, and I'm going to say, uh, I can, if I can spell triangle, uh, 50 comma 50, uh, 200 comma 50, uh, 150 comma 200, and I'm going to run this, and you can see, oh, and I just turned off because my camera turns off after a half an hour to save the power, and that one turned off too. You can see now there's a triangle on the screen, and the triangle is made from those three points, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Hooray! A rectangle. So let me, so I'm just looking um, in the chat to see if there's any important questions. Somebody's asking if I'm going to do, today at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to do exactly what I'm doing today, but using P5, doing right now, but using P5.js, which is a JavaScript programming environment. Okay, so um, let me come back over here for a second, and uh, let me turn this camera back on. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take like a, not a break, but I'm going to pause for five minutes to let people who are watching this tutorial kind of design their own shape. Um, so, for example, let me just show you a few things. I'm going to quickly map out some of these for you. I, we looked at line and triangle. Rectangle takes an X, a Y, a width, and a height. So you define a rectangle by the point on the corner, X, Y, and some width, and some height. And ellipse, which is a way of drawing a circle or an ellipsoid, elliptical uh, round thing also takes an x and a y and a width and a height. The difference being that the x, y is at the center, and this is the width. You can think of its diameter across, and this is the height, its diameter up and down. So I might suggest to you right now, there's also that you now your kind of assignment in five minutes before we move on to the next thing is try to make a picture with some rectangles, some lines, some triangles, and ellipses. Of course, there are other functions. There's quad, there's arc, and there's a zillion things in there in processing. But if you're really here and just being a beginner, what I would do is um, limit yourself to these functions, look at them in the reference, copy and paste the code examples from the reference into your code, try playing with the numbers, see what you could design. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm loath to even suggest what kind of thing you might draw because there's so many possibilities and I don't want to to send you all in one particular direction. So be as creative as you can, expressing yourself, but also realize just throw some stuff on the screen because you just got about five minutes before, guess what, I'm gonna add color to this. So and let's see what you guys get. Um, I'm, I'm having a little more trouble than I anticipated, like following the chat and that sort of thing, but um, uh, now is a good time also to ask any questions in the chat. I'm gonna scroll back and read some of it um, while you're doing this quick little exercise. Um, and that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna be here still, but I'm gonna kind of be a little less talking to the camera for a minute. I'm gonna drink some more of this tea. Okay, I'm just looking back to see if there are any other questions. Um, Canada, I'm sorry, you're from Canada. Somebody said they were from Mumbai, which was exciting. Um, Ah, so someone's saying they have to leave soon for their school or their class. And I, so I'm definitely willing, if you're a school or an organization and you want to do this again sometime and you have a group, we can coordinate it. I'm, I'm game. It's a very busy time of year now in December, but I think probably we could look for a time in January or February for sure. Um, I'm going to check here. Uh, okay, I see people are typing things in. I'm just looking here. Um, and... Okay, uh, and uh, okay, so how's that going, everybody? If you have a question, type it in the chat. Uh, you're from Mumbai, okay, Krish, 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 one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, so uh, guess what? I'm gonna make something. So I'm gonna sit here and make something. You can follow along with me if you want. Uh, I don't know what to make, though. Somebody give me an idea. Uh, Um, let me look at that. Okay, I've got a whoops, circle, it's too big. Make a little circle in the middle. Why did I, oh, 180 is where I wanted that to be. Uh, then I'm going to make a line uh, at like, uh, let's put the line behind the circle. Notice the order that you're typing things makes a big difference. Uh, uh, and uh, 
Let's see. Okay, I've got a, I'm making a little like alien thing. <laughs> there we go, there's my little alien. It's gonna be a one-eyed alien with a rectangle. Uh, There we go. This is my, okay, this is my design. So you can see, uh, you know, how this is going. I'm gonna look in the chat. Uh, robot smile face, trying to make an hourglass with two triangles and two lines. These are all great ideas, wonderful. Um, okay, I'm gonna give us a couple more minutes. And then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna come over here and erase. I wanted to get to animation, so we don't have a ton of time but I think I can do it. Color is something we can add somewhat easily and quickly. Okay. And we'll come back here. And, uh, okay, so I'm gonna move on now and start talking about color. Uh, you know, realistically, if we were doing this as a day-long workshop, you would have had a half an hour, hour to try to make something and there would have been a lot of questions. But I think in the interest of time here and trying to do this in an hour, I'm going to move on now to the next thing. So this is what I've got. I made this for myself. It's, I don't know what it is, but it's, I like it. And you can see this is my window. Uh, it's 640 by 360. I've got two lines and I've got three circles and one rectangle there in the middle of that circle. So um, certainly I think what you're probably imagining in your head is it would be nice if not everything was black and white. So one thing you might be noticing here is processing picked some default colors for you. The default being that a particular object's outline is black, but its interior is white. So you can see up there the interior of that circle is white and the, the background of the entire thing is this light gray. So all of this is stuff that you can change on your own. And the thing, that you need to learn about to do this. Well, okay, so there's three new commands, if you haven't done this before, new functions that are key to doing color. One is background. And what goes in here is the question. Another is fill. What goes in there is the question. And another is stroke. The good news for you is that what goes inside each of those functions is the same thing. It's the information to describe a color. So how do you describe a color? So well, actually, so first of all, let's, let's, make one, let's, let's make one distinction here, which is that let's say I'm drawing a circle on the screen. The stroke refers to the outline of that circle. So this assigns the color to the outline. The fill assigns the color to the interior of the shape. And there's a ways that you can have a shape that's empty in the interior with no fill or that has no outline with no stroke. And those are things you'll find in the reference. Uh, but I'm gonna just focus on the basics here, which is giving every shape a fill or a stroke. Now there are two ways, there, there's more than this, but right now I think a good way to start is there are two ways to think about color. Grayscale and what I'm going to call RGB color. Grayscale meaning that I have a single value that determines the amount of white in the color. So if there is zero white in the color, then I have black. And if there is 255 in the color, then I have white. So this is the range. So the range for grayscale as defined by default in processing is between zero and 255. If you give if you say fill zero, you will have a black interior. If you say fill 255, you will have a white interior. Let's go take a look at that and see that in action. So at the very top here, I'm just gonna say fill zero and run it again. And you can see all the shapes now have this uh, dark black interior. If I were to say fill you know, 75, you can see they're still darker, but not as dark. So it's a continuum, zero being all the way black, 255 being all the way white and in between. The fact that it's 255 has to do with the way that 
things are stored in the computer and memory and bits and zeros and ones, and that's an interesting discussion that I will leave for some other time. But this is the range by default between zero and 255. And I could do the same thing with stroke. So I could say stroke 255, and you can see here all the shapes now have a white outline with this dark gray interior. So that's one way of doing color. The other way of doing color is what I'm calling, not me, I didn't invent this clearly, uh, RGB color. So instead of a single number with RGB color, color, you need to provide processing, the fill, stroke, or background, background functions with an amount of red, an amount of green, and an amount of blue. Each of these having a range between 0 and 255. So you can kind of imagine exactly what this might do. If I come back over here and I look at the fill, I'm giving it an amount of red, an amount of green, and an amount of blue. So what will this color be if it has a lot of red, but no green and no blue? RGB, red, green, blue, right? So we can run this and you can see all the shapes are entirely red because it has only red. If I were to give it, let's give it a little bit of blue. We can say I mix a little blue in there and you can see I could maybe give it even a little bit more blue. You can see I'm getting this more pinkish purplish color because red and blue make purple. So, you know, this now walks down the road of all sorts of an interesting long elaborate discussion about color theory and color mixing and the properties of light. But one thing that's important to realize here is the, the, what's going on in, in adding these colors, to adding some red and adding some blue is is, uh, is, is adding light together. So you can think about it, if you had a red flashlight and a blue flashlight and you shine them on the wall next to each other, what color you get? It's a little bit different than mixing paints. There's a lot of similarity, but you know if you mix like all, like a whole lot of colors, red, green, blue, orange, paint, you'll end up getting like sort of brown or dark color. The more you add color, the brighter it gets. So for example, 255, 255, 255 is white. And actually, grayscale is just shorthand for the red value being equal to the green value being equal to the blue value. So if I were to go back here and say 75, 75, 75, you can see now that I have what I had before, but if all the values are equal, I can shorthand wise just say 75. So now I can also add a background, which I could say, uh, let's use that nice uh, pinkish purplish color, and I can have this fill and stroke. And for these, I can have this stroke for these lines. The other thing you can notice is the order matters. So where you put fill and stroke affects all the shapes that come after it. So if I were to now say fill 0, 255, 0, and I were to say stroke 255, 0, 0, and I'm not really, you can see that the lines are white. You can see here that the lines are still white, but the outline of the circle is now red because this stroke here overrode the stroke that was at the top. So what I might suggest is if you wanted to be really long-winded about this is for every shape, and maybe these should both be white, and then I want, uh, I want this, the, this ellipse to be this color, and then you can start putting line breaks you know, and assigning uh, specific colors for every shape, okay? So you can see I could keep going with this and I'm going to go with them. I'm going to muck around and, and make my strange alien with whatever colors and things that I want. So this is now, it's 1045. I, you know, an hour would be just 15 minutes from now. We're going to kind of wrap up. But let's take five, you know, a little less, around five minutes to have you guys try to add color. I'm going to look at the chat, see what questions came up. Hopefully people are still watching or listening or have questions. Um, and then I'm going to add, the last step we're going to add is a little bit of animation to what you're doing. Um, so uh, let's take a look uh, and I'm going to see if there's any questions in the chat. So, um, okay, great. So people are um, talking about what they are making, an hourglass, a snowman, uh, cover stroke weight. Sure, so somebody asked me to cover stroke weight. Stroke weight is a function that changes the thickness of the lines. So, you know, I'll add that into mine for, uh, I'll put it here under the, for these lines. If I say stroke weight four and run it again, you can see that the, the thickness of the, of the outline is much, much greater. It's actually four pixels wide and, and that can be, this is actually a useful thing to add because it makes it a bit more visible what's going on too in terms of the stroke and the fill. 
Um, so somebody who joined here late, oh, do values wrap if you exceed 255 or are they capped? Um, you know, there's a kind of a bit of an it depends answer, but I will say they are capped. So if you pass 300 into the function, you'll still get uh, the white, the, the value 255. Um, and uh, somebody asked, what is this programming I'm talking about? So I'm using something called processing. I guess I erased that as processing.org is the programming language environment you can download to follow along with this tutorial. And this tutorial, by the way, will be archived uh, on YouTube as soon as it's over. So you can go back and watch it again <laughs> if you if anybody really wanted to, or if somebody else wants to watch it. Obviously, the live chat thing won't be an aspect anymore, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna um, take a couple minutes to add some colors to mine. I want, I like the, these antenna being, uh, um, and so I'm gonna make the, uh, so my alien should be green. I like that with green, but uh, I'm gonna make a like purple outline. Okay, like that with, uh, let's keep everything kind of purplish. There we go. And that's blue there. The antenna I think should be red. This is very important. Some sort of uh, reddish color and green on the outline. Let's keep the stroke I'm going to just keep the stroke the same for everything. And uh, let me make those a little bit darker. There we go. And then the, this last rectangle is the eye, which would be something nice and uh, blue. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. And the background, let's make it a little bit brighter. There we go. Okay, this is my alien now with some colors. I, I guess my outline was, is too close to the, let's just make the background a, uh, a light gray. Or maybe something darker. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm clearly not a visual designer. <laughs> There's my shape with some colors now. Okay, um, looking here. There's more people in the chat saying funny things uh, uh, and typing in their code with snowman. Uh, you didn't, someone's asking, I did not get a green color on the shape. So it's kind of hard for me to debug your code from the chat as much as I love the idea of trying to do that. But so Kamran, I will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I don't have the chat open on this computer here with processing. Let me look, fill green ellipse. Ah, uh, Kamran, I see you have zero Dot. So the mistake, I'm noticing somebody in the chat has typed in this. Fill 0 0.255 comma 100. So this is just a typo, but processing doesn't know it's a typo. They think you're trying to put in the number 0 0.22255. So uh, in that case, you make, make sure you need to have a comma there. Uh, this is a good moment to just show you sort of what happens if something's out of place. So I'm going to like remove this. Um, I'm going to remove this, whoa, something crazy is going on down there. Um, I'm going to remove this uh, semicolon. So one thing you'll notice in processing that if you have a syntax error, you'll get a red squiggly line where the syntax error is. And then down here on the bottom, there's an errors tab. So if you click on that errors tab, you'll see missing a semicolon, and it will also tell you what line number that's happening, line number two. I could actually even double click on that. It'll take me right there. I add the semicolon, and there you go. So this is the, you know, most of the time the error processing can figure out what it is and give you a nice helpful suggestion. Sometimes it can't, and this is just the life that you lead now. Okay, 1049. Um, okay. All right, so by the way, sometimes like the chat, you should know you're seeing me about 20 or 30 seconds after something that I'm actually saying live, just so you know, because uh, the way the delay works on YouTube. Okay, we've got 10 more minutes. Here's what I've got left to do. I want to show you how to animate something. <laughs> Big topic, 10 minutes, no problem. And I want to show you, uh, and I want to just talk about where do you go from here. This is an hour. It's all going to be over. <laughs> I'll go on with my day, you'll go on with your day. Someday we'll meet again, I hope, but I'm gonna to try to give you some resources without just like plugging my own stuff too much of, of how you might learn more of this. Okay, so here we go. Um, here we go, let me come over here to talk about animation for a second. 
okay. So this is a big topic. You know, what we've been doing here, and I said I was coming over here, but I'm going back over here for a second. All of these programs that we've been writing, you and me together here on this day, um, have just been these static images. Programming, I said, is the act of writing instructions for the computer to follow. There was a first instruction, a second instruction, a third instruction, a fourth instruction. It got to the end, it finished, the picture is presented, you're done. But animation programs are most programs that you write, even your, the email program you use, Photoshop, your word processing program, these are things that run over time. So programs need to handle interaction events that might happen, they need to handle a drawing over and over again to animate something. So this is something that I think we can add somewhat quickly to the processing, to processing today at least. And you know, I'm gonna gloss over some of the underlying details, but the core idea will be there and hopefully you will enjoy this somewhat. So the thing that you need to add to your program looks like this. And there's a lot of new syntax here. Not all of it will make immediate sense to you or even sense to you in the next 10 minutes. But as I show you further resources and you go further into this, it will start to become more and more clear. But in, what I'm going to show you how to do is instead of writing your code simply as a linear list of instructions right there in the processing editor, I'm going to tell you put your code either in setup or inside draw. These are what are known as blocks of code. Blocks of code begin with a curly bracket and end with a closed curly bracket. So this is the way to say that the code that's in here is part of this thing called setup and the code that's in here is part of this thing called draw. And these things, these are functions actually that you are defining, the setup function, the draw function. They're special functions that processing requires you to write for an animation. That setup is a function that happens once at the beginning and draw is a function that happens forever and ever, looping over and over again. Draw the circle, draw the circle, draw the circle. So if I come back over here and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna save this as uh, hour of code one. So I can, uh, now I'm gonna save it, whoops. I'm gonna save it as hour of code two. So, um, cause I wanna just, what I want to do now is only leave this circle in. So you can see I simplified the program a little bit. So it's just drawing a circle in the middle of the screen. What I want to do now is say void setup, void draw. So I put some of my code in setup and I put some of my code in draw. Now, what goes where is an interesting question. There's really no right answers to these questions, but there is sort of an answer for at least what I'm showing you right now. So one thing that certainly should go in setup is size. That is the thing you do when the program begins. Set up the size of the window. If I want, if all, my ultimate goal is to maybe have this ellipse drawn, move around the screen, I need to continuously draw that circle. Draw it here, then draw it there, then draw it here, then draw it there, then draw it there, then over there, then over there. So that is something that happens over and over again. Background is an interesting question. Should it be in setup or should it be in draw? Well, first let's just run this and see what I even get. So one thing you'll notice here is I'm not getting anything different. It's still just a circle being drawn in the middle of the window. The code is actually still running. In fact, it's drawing that circle. It's like draw, 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 draw. But I see it as a static image because that circle is being drawn only in the same place every time. But what if this number 320, what if that number could be something different every time through draw? For example, and I'm kind of rushing through this a little bit because we're running out of time, but uh, for example, what if that location could be the location where the mouse is? What if I could say draw the circle where that mouse is, where the mouse is, where the mouse is? And in fact, processing and all programming language environments have a mechanism for doing this, generally speaking, not just the mouse. It's something called a variable. A variable is a word that stands in for a number. And it's something that can change over time, it can hold information, it can hold and store data. So very quickly, something I can add here is mouse X and mouse Y. You can see those words turned a pink color because processing recognized them as key words, as variables within the system. And if I do this, you can see now, look at this, that circle is continuously being drawn wherever the mouse is. And I already, all of a sudden right now, I have a painting program. Beautiful, drawing it where the mouse is. Now, remember I had this weird question of where should background be? 
Well, notice that background was in setup, so the background was drawn only once. So I'm never erasing a previous circle that was drawn, and you can see I have this painting program. What would happen if I take background and move it to the beginning of draw? Now you'll notice the circle is moving, but I'm not seeing the previous one, because every time it draws the new circle, before that, it erases the background. So this is the way that you can create something moving along the screen that's interactive by assigning its location to mouse X, mouse Y. But it's also important to remember that these are just numbers. So I could, for example, put fill in mouse X, and I could put mouse Y in background. So also, you can see that the color is changing as I'm moving the mouse, right? As I move down, it gets, it gets, it gets brighter. As I move up, it gets, um, it gets darker and the, and the circle's value is changing. I could also just keep the circle in the middle, but I could use mouse X and mouse Y for its size. And you can see here, if I come in here, as I, uh, as I move up and down, the size of the circle changes based on mouse X, mouse Y. So those variables are just data, they're just numbers, and you can assign them to anything in your program. Position, color, size, you could put mouse Y as the X position of something, so it's, that might be very confusing because as the user moves along the X axis, the thing moves down, but that could be an interesting and different interaction. So there's a lot of possibilities here. And this is just the first step. These are two variables that processing gives you for free, but ultimately, and this is, this, this is part of next steps really, um, you can define your own variables. You can make up your own variables, give them their, your own names, the score for a game, the uh, speed of a thing that's flying across the screen. You can make up your own variables too. So um, we have, uh, you know, I'm gonna go a little bit longer than just the one hour, maybe by five or 10 minutes. Um, so why don't I give you guys a few minutes to try adding mouse X and mouse Y in your code somewhere um, and see what you can change color or change position. Um, and then I'm gonna wrap up and have some closing thoughts and try to point you towards some other resources that might let you uh, keep going and do more. Okay, uh, yeah, so somebody's asking, um, Somebody's asking uh, what button does the auto formatting. So one thing, I, I'll just mention this, people are asking about it, is there is a sort of a standard way of indenting code, code that's inside a block. Uh, is typically indented a little bit to sort of see what's in, but it doesn't affect how the code runs. This exact program would run the same way if I wrote it like this. It's sort of a mess to look at, but a way that you can have processing automatically adjust all your indentation and everything to make it so nice and, you know, I don't know, clean and easy to look at um, is under edit uh, auto format. So this auto format button, which is also command T or probably control T on a PC. So if I now do command T, you can see that it auto formatted my code uh, to be nice and organized. Okay, some people are asking questions. Um, uh, so somebody asked about mobile uh, somebody asked about, yes, so somebody asked about transparency. So you can give fill or stroke a fourth argument, which has to do with the transparency. That's correct. Um, someone asked about um, mobile development. So mobile development, that's a big question. There's lots of ways you can do mobile development. Um, but one of the, because processing is built on top of Java and Android systems are Java-based, you can actually do... Uh, Android development in processing, and there's something called processing Android, which is essentially like an add-on or a mode that you can add. By the way, you can also do all of your processing programming in Python uh, by adding the Python mode, which is uh, something you can add right here through add mode. So you can look at Android and Python through here. This afternoon at 1.30, I'm going to do this exact tutorial again, but using the P5.js programming environment, which is a JavaScript based. So, Java, JavaScript, and Python are your sort of three languages that you can work with in this sort of world of processing in P5. Um, <laughs> okay, will you be starting Java? So all, by the way, this is Java. You are learning Java. I mean, there's some nuances and some specifics to the way Java programs are built that are being not shown here. But uh, you know, if you're interested in Java, you know, I, I might suggest just looking at all of my back catalog of video tutorials that use processing that will get into all of those details. Um, okay, 
Um, so we're coming up to 11 o'clock here. Um, so first of all, I would like to encourage you to please share with me anything that you made from today. Uh, probably the easiest way to do that is through Twitter, uh, slash Schiffman, S-H-I-F-F-M-A-N. Um, uh, so I'd love to just sort of hear how this was for you or give, get any feedback. Uh, certainly there's also, this will be archived on YouTube and you can uh, write in the comments there as well. Um, so this is the question, I guess. What if you want to learn more? So um, I'm going to uh, get some props over here. Oops, the camera went off, so let me fix that. Uh, so, uh, ah, I knocked over a glass. Everything's okay, everybody. <laughs> it didn't have any water in it. It was my water glass, but I finished it. So um, there are lots of books that you can get. Um, this is a particularly wonderful one. Uh, Make, Getting Started with Processing, a hands-on introduction to making interactive graphics written by Casey Reese and Ben Fry, the creators of Processing. I really don't mean to be selling you guys stuff. I'm just sort of showing you. This is a, my book, Learning Processing, which has a lot of information in it. Um, and uh, certainly on the Processing website, uh, you can under here, under books, uh, you'll see there's also the processing uh, handbook, which is, the, uh, which is also written by Casey and Ben. And you can scroll down here and see that there are a lot of other books that you could look at um, that will give you a lot of different ideas of working with processing. I would also suggest that you go here under tutorials. Uh, my head is in the way here. Uh, tutorials on the processing website. Um, this uh, hello processing tutorial is actually a kind of recorded version essentially of what I did today, but we made this two years ago. So it's still the same, same content, it's interactive, it actually has a place where you can type code into the browser to try it out. So I, I would certainly recommend you checking that out. And there are also um, these text-based tutorials that are here as well. And right up here, um, at the top here under video tutorials, there are a lot of wonderful video tutorials. I'll mention uh, Jose, I think his is uh, uh, Fun Programming, uh, or maybe, or the Plethora Project. All of these tutorials are great. I guess since I'm here, if you like this video, um, I would suggest that you look at, um, let me just uh, look, go to this link here. Um, these are all of my uh, playlists. And you can see here that uh, this section here, learning processing and beginners, and these, I have probably like 60 to 100 videos that kind of go through all this processing stuff in more detail. Um, a lot of the stuff that I also have are tutorials about um, a natural simulation and physics simulation and, 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 and generative algorithms and that type of thing. And I've also started a set of tutorials working with P5JS, which is uh, JavaScript, and some things with the Kinect, um, the Microsoft Kinect, and different sensing computers. Anyway, there's a lot more there. So uh, you know, I, I now I feel weird like I'm like I did this like I'm advertising stuff, which I don't mean to be doing. But um, so that I think would be a good resource for you. Um, there are all sorts of interesting uh, workshops and probably schools that you could think about attending. Uh, one, of, one of my um, uh, favorite new ventures is the School for Poetic Computation, which is a, 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 a sort of pop-up school in a way I might call here in New York that does uh, work with people with creativity and programming and electronics projects and they have kind of one week or ten week programs things like that there's another one that happened in germany last summer called something like make some, somebody somebody remind me what that is i'll link to these so i don't know put your put your ideas for next steps um, in the comments of this video when it gets archived or in the chat here and um, and hopefully that will give you some ideas of what to do next if you're interested in this um, so uh, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at before I say goodbye. <laughs> thank you for watching. I'm gonna look in the chat and see if there's some more questions I can answer. Uh, how do I export processing sketches as a Java application? Okay, let me show that to you. Uh, here in processing, under File, under Export Application. So this will actually export your processing sketch as a standalone application. And if I do Export Application, uh, Save Changes, yes. And now I can pick like well. Do I, which platform do I want to export for? Do I want it to be full screen? Uh, do I want to embed Java, which I would recommend if you're intending to like send it or distribute it. That's why it has Java embedded in it. Nobody has to have a separate install of Java. So I'm going to hit uh, export. And you can see here I have my Mac application, which is there. And so it also comes with the source. And you can look at it sort of translated your processing code into Java, which really just means it puts a few things around it. And now I could run this. 
When I run it, you can see there it is. My program just runs. So it looks like it's running, with, but processing is not open anymore. So this is now just a standalone application that's running on my computer. Uh, hello, France. Um, what do you think is programming natural comes, or can we build that? I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh, void setup is this can be call method too. Okay, so someone's so setup and draw. There's so many questions and things we could discuss and answer, but I will. Let's try to let me try to talk about this for a second. So setup and draw are special functions. I was going to open processing back up just to kind of have that as a reference. Um, setup and draw are special functions that processing uh, asks you to write. I'm going to get this open again. Uh, open recent. Um, and uh, you don't actually execute. So background fill and ellipse are functions that you are executing that are in the processing library. Setup and draw are like the inverse of that. They're functions that you're defining, but processing is calling them for you. It knows to call setup at the beginning and knows to call draw over and over again. Something we've missed in this tutorial, but I certainly get into some of my other videos, is how do you define and call your own function? And this is just something that comes up once you start to build larger and more complex programs. Um, um, thank you for some of the nice comments. How can I program a function slide with Java? So I don't know if you're asking about using a slider. So interface elements are, are, are a tricky topic, but there are different Java, or and for Android in, in particular, you can use, you need to sort of use the native Android stuff to get the interface stuff, and you could then combine that with some of the drawing things you have in processing. But uh, one of the things about processing that's great that I guess I'll show you if I go to sketch import library, these under add library, because processing is built on top of Java and open source, people can design and make add-ons for it, essentially. Like, oh, processing doesn't have code for checking email. I'll make a processing library that checks email. So if I go click Add Library, what you'll see here is a very, very long list of all sorts of additional code libraries that are available for processing. And if I just kind of like scroll down here, you can see um, you know, Open Connect for using the Microsoft Connect. OBJ loader for loading a 3D model from another program, uh, QR code for reading a QR code, uh, SFTP for FTPing a file, SuperCollider for working with SuperCollider sprites. You can just see there's just tons and tons of MIDI for working with MIDI, which is an audio thing on the computer. So there's lots and lots of libraries that you could potentially add and use code with too. Um, okay, so it looks like the questions have ended and it's about 11.10. This has been going for an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, I will be back this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. to do my next uh, hour of code with uh, P5.js. So I'm going to go over here to my uh, console and hit the stop stream button, which means I will disappear. I don't know how long it takes YouTube, but this will probably be up and archived within the next hour. Please stay in touch, share what you made, give me feedback. Uh, Twitter.com slash Schiffman is probably the best way to reach me for today. And I um, look forward to hearing from any of you. And I'm going to hit stop streaming now. Goodbye. Thank you. Ah, see you later.